Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to talk about uh, strain gauges. This will be only an introductory uh, video, so I will not show any experiments. I just uh, talk about the strain gauges in uh, theory, but I show you some practical examples. So in one of my previous video about uh, tensile testing, I was talking about uh, the strain, but uh, let's repeat that again. So the strain is basically the ratio between the elongation of the specimen and the original length of the specimen. So basically uh, that's what you can see here in the formula. So you take uh, the length of the specimen during the measurement and then at the same time you subtract the original length and then you take the product of this and divide it by the original length. And then this ratio provides you the strain and uh, sometimes it's just uh, expressed as a simple number, sometimes it is expressed as a percentage. Uh, it depends on what you need or how you try to interpret your data. And if you try to use strain gauges for measuring strain, you have to keep in mind that uh, these devices are not capable of measuring large strains. So the maximum strain that can be measured by these devices is around 2%. So since we are measuring very, very small strains, it is very convenient to introduce a uh, micro strain or milli strain. It is nothing else than just putting these micro and milli prefixes in front of the strain. So we get uh, some numbers which are easier to treat and, uh, and that's all. So about 2%, uh, we just don't want to use this. And uh, also in the industry, uh, these are used in those places where you just measure uh, small uh, displacements. For example, bridges or railways or some other uh, construction things. So you use them there. But here, um, we just discuss them. So we don't uh, talk about any more uh, uh, real life examples because I will show them in my next videos. So on this picture you can see this uh, strain gauge. Uh, this length here, I haven't uh, shown it, but this is less than uh, one centimeter. So this is less than one centimeter and uh, this device is also sensitive in this direction, so in the x direction. So when you mount this on your specimen, you have to keep this in mind. So you see this uh, grid pattern here. So this is basically one simple wire going up and down or uh, left and right, left and right. And then uh, basically it's connecting these two solder tabs. So what happens here is that when you apply uh, strain on this uh, device in the X direction, then uh, these wires become uh, somewhat longer and since they become longer uh, they change their resistance and you want to measure this uh, change in the resistance and you want to convert that into uh, strain. So what happens is that we use these very thin wires and we connect it to a circuit and uh, we measure the change in the resistance and that is converted into the strain uh, value. So a little bit more about this. So the strain gauge is basically, it's uh, like a sticker or a small foil. So what you have to do is that you have this uh, plastic or polymer uh, carrier and you uh, glue it on the surface, which is prepared. So it's flat and uh, polished and uh, clean of any kind of uh, residues and contaminations. And then uh, you glue it. Now, there are some special glues and special techniques. I will not discuss them here. So you just glue on it and uh, use it as, as you want. So on top of this polymer uh, foil, we have this metallic uh, foil, basically, a very thin wires. And then we have these two other copper wires, which go to the circuit. 
and uh, within this uh, 2% we get a linear response so that's uh, very good because uh, it's easy to measure and uh, when we use these kind of uh, devices we have to consider two things we have to measure the uh, resistance so that is basically here we just measure the resistance between the two uh, terminals and we have to know what is the gauge factor the gauge factor is typically around two it is always uh, provided by the manufacturer so if you buy it from some good place uh, they give you the exact number up to maybe two digits uh, precision so they can tell you if it's like 2.08 or uh, 1.97 or something else so why is this gauge factor important because uh, if you look at this formula down here then uh, the gauge factor is basically the ratio between the uh, change of the resistance as compared to the original resistance of the strain gauge divided by the strain so once you have this let's uh, call this r star uh, you can rearrange this equation and basically what you do is that uh, you divide the r star by the gauge factor uh, which gives you the strain so this is measured and then uh, this is uh, provided and and that's all so we just have to measure the resistance but uh, that's a bit challenging so on the next uh, slide I show you why it is uh, challenging so uh, we thought that the uh, gauge factor is the following but the problem is that we have to measure very small changes in the resistance so for example if we measure 500 uh, micro strain deformation with a strain gauge uh, with uh, gauge factor 2 then uh, the change in the resistance will be just 0.1 percent so if we take a regular uh, strain gauge with uh, 350 ohm uh, resistance then the resistance change will be only 0 0.35 ohms and uh, regarding resistance this thing is very difficult to to measure so what we can do is that uh, we take a Wheatstone bridge so the Wheatstone bridge uh, is here where we basically have uh, two voltage divider opposed to each other so on one side we have R1 R2 and on the other side we have RG which is uh, the resistance of the strain gauge so basically here and R3 so I uh, I just wrote down the formula here so you can measure the V out uh, so the voltage uh, in, in the bridge and uh, you see that it is uh, V in times R3 divided by I R3 plus RG minus R2 divided by R1 plus R2 but how do we get that so remember this is just two voltage dividers so we separate them and here is uh, one voltage divider so basically the top uh, V in here and then I just noted it with ground so this is the negative side here uh, and we measure the V out here and of course between ground uh, in this case but uh, you can easily just use the voltage divider formula and V out 1 2 so R for the R1 R2 resistances uh, is the following uh, it's here so we do that and then we go to the RG R3 uh, side it's the same so we measure the V out here and between here so we have R3 and RG here and uh, this is our formula so what we have to do is basically we just uh, subtract uh, the two guys from each other and uh, that is written down here and this is basically this formula up here so this is very easy because if you put your 
uh, strain gauge into your Wheatstone bridge. As one of the resistors, uh, you get a quarter bridge where you have basically one quarter of the bridge uh, active. So one component out of the four will be active in such sense that that will change. But uh, of course, resistance is not an active component in the classical definition. But in this case, we say it is active because uh, it will introduce some changes. So uh, the strain gauge is changing, but uh, it's also the, the problem is that this uh, circuit is not balanced. So what we can do is that uh, we can change the R2 to a potentiometer. Uh, I tried to show it here. And then uh, you can uh, balance your Wheatstone bridge. So for example, basically you can zero out the output uh, voltage of your uh, circuit. And uh, you can always set up a zero position with your uh, strain gauge. So that's what you use. And uh, there are other uh, types of uh, bridges. So you can have a half bridge and also a full bridge. So you connect uh, different uh, resistors, different strain gauges into your Wheatstone bridge. And uh, you can account for different types of uh, strains or different kinds of effects like uh, temperature effect, for example, and so on and so on. But uh, what's the takeaway message of this uh, slide is that basically we cannot measure small changes in the resistance. So instead of measuring the resistance, we measure voltages because that's more easy to measure in small scales because we have operation amplifiers, high resolution AD converters and so on and so on. And in order to be able to measure the change of the resistance as a change of a voltage, we put our uh, strain gauges into Wheatstone bridges. And then there are several types of Wheatstone bridges, but uh, the main, uh, the, the most simple uh, Wheatstone bridge is the quarter bridge. And uh, we can also imagine these things as two uh, voltage dividers, so we can easily derive the formula for the output voltage and uh, that's all. But this is only the output voltage. So how can we convert the output voltage into, into the strain? That's a different question. So now let's see how we can do that. So here we have the circuit for our unbalanced uh, bridge and our only active component is the RG and we would like to measure the output voltage uh, here, which will uh, correspond to the change of the uh, RG. So basically that will represent our strain change. And then this is the formula for the V out. Uh, I showed the same exact formula in the previous uh, slide. So what we have to do now is that we have to introduce the uh, a new variable which is the ratio of the unstrained and strained uh, voltages. So we use VR as the name of the variable and here just uh, we use the ratios. So V out divided by V in when it is strained minus V out divided by V in uh, when it is unstrained. And then here uh, we have to substitute the resistor values that uh, correspond uh, to the two terms. So instead of using the V out uh, as a number, we have to use these formulas and uh, we can derive an equation uh, for the delta RG divided by RG, which is minus four times VR divided by one plus two VR. And then we notice that this delta RG divided by RG is already uh, familiar to us, for us, because that uh, term is in the formula, which also contains the gauge factor and the strain uh, that you can see down uh, below here. So we know this guy and we also know this guy. So we just uh, flip our equation and uh, divide by GF and multiply by epsilon. So we get our final formula where the epsilon, so the strain, can be expressed 
as minus 4 times vr divided by the uh, gauge factor times 1 plus 2 vr. And basically that's how you get the strain when you use your strain gauge in an unbalanced uh, uh, bridge. So this is the very simple formula. And uh, in the next video I will continue from here when I will mount a strain gauge on some material, maybe a plastic or a metal uh, piece, and uh, I will measure the voltage and see if we can derive the strain in some way. So I hope that uh, this video was uh, useful and uh, you learned something, and uh, see you in the next video of this uh, series, where I will explain a bit more about the strain gauges and uh, the mounting and also I will show you some measurements and some source code for Arduino where you can uh, process the data for uh, of the strain gauges. So see you in the next video.